Hello and welcome to Catching Up with the Backs, episode number nine. And this week, as, as you can see, we've got a pretty special guest. Uh, very fortunate to be joined today uh, by former Silverback and current Detroit Red Wings forward, uh, Taro Hirose. Taro, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, doing very well. Um, so quickly, for those who don't know, I'm going to give a quick recap. Uh, you played for the Silverbacks after two seasons, uh, 2014 and 2015. Uh, then you went off to Michigan State for three seasons before signing pro with the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, we will talk about, of course, all of that in great detail. Uh, but first off, where are you joining from and what have you been up to the past few weeks? Uh, yeah, I'm just at home in, in Calgary, Alberta. So I've just been, uh, you know, working out, skating and um I was golfing a lot before, but obviously, the, you know, the weather's been a little bit uh, snowy here lately, so I haven't been able to do that. But other than that, just uh, hanging out and trying to stay safe. Yeah, we just had our first snowfall not too long ago. When was the first snowfall in Calgary? <laughs> uh, we had a lot of snow last week, so it was pretty hectic with uh, the roads not being too great and, and uh, getting everywhere. But, you know, since then, it's uh, kind of cleared up and it's been a little bit nicer. And quickly, can you tell me about your summer? Obviously, with COVID, uh, weird for probably everyone, but you said golfing. What else were you able to get up to in the summer? Yeah, you know, just pretty much been hanging out with friends. We uh, we were able to make out to Shoe Shop for, for a weekend there and, and get on the boat, get on the lake. You know, it's always nice to, to go back out there and, and see some other friends out there. So, you know, other than that, just been, been hanging out with friends and, and trying to stay busy. Awesome. Okay, let's uh, roll into your time here uh, in Salmon Arm. Uh, your first season was 2014-15, but uh, it looked like the year before you kind of committed here to the Silverbacks. So first off, can we just start with why you decided the BCHL and Salmon Arm was kind of the best route for you? Yeah, you know, obviously in Midget, I was, I'm still a smaller player, but um, the BCHL has that reputation for being a little bit more skilled and, and offensive. So I thought, you know, it really fit my game style a lot better. And then, you know, obviously, you know, Salmon Arm was kind of the first team to reach out and, and show a lot of interest. So, um, you know, after coming to a couple of development camps and, and seeing, you know, the city or the little town there and um, just kind of loved everything about it and um, just seemed like the perfect, perfect fit. Your first season, uh, 50 points, led the team in scoring. <laughs> Did you think, uh, or why do you think, I guess, the transition appeared to be pretty smooth? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I just think between teammates and coaches, you know, they made it really easy. And um, I think I kind of got lucky leading the team. You know, we had some some other guys get injured and um, other guys were playing really well, but um, got injured toward the end. But, um, you know, we had a really good group of guys and everyone just made me feel so comfortable coming in. So your coaches uh, that year, Brandon West, head coach, assistant coach, uh, Misko Ant Antison, <laughs> and uh, GM was Troy Mick. <laughs> what stands out uh, at, at the time, the coaching staff, and how do they kind of help you with your game? Um, yeah, you know, they just bring bring a lot of passion to the game and, and always just keep it really fun. I, you know, um, definitely one of my times with the Silverbacks was, you know, I think it was every Thursday we would um, play little games and play for Skittles, and, and Brando always made that, that, that a really big deal at practice, so that was always fun, and I love that part of the game. So, um, yeah, they always kept it fun, but you could just, you know, feel the passion that they brought to the rink every day playing for Skittles, eh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was actually a big Skittles guy when I was there. I always had some before the game and, um, you know, me and my line mates, we'd always toss them around to each other and make sure we had a couple before the game. <laughs> and uh, what was curious then? What was the, the pace to these games? Was it pretty high tempo? <laughs> yeah, it was just like a little, it was the same game. It was just like a little two-on-two -two breakaway. Um, you had to race to complete or score as many goals as you could or like 10 goals and before the other team could. So um, we were always split up and there was always a good little rivalry. So um, just lots of fun to have in practice. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, that first year you guys did miss the playoffs. Um, was it by one point? Like going back and looking, it seemed to be pretty tight. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I think I remember that. We were, uh, yeah, one or two points out going to the last game against Penticton and um, West Kelowna needed to, to lose. And then I think they lost and, and we needed to beat Penticton. And uh, we ended up coming back. I remember Heider scored um, like in the third period and he was pretty excited about it. And then, uh, yeah, we ended up losing in overtime, which was pretty heartbreaking. But, um, you know, that was just, uh, we had a really good group of guys. We just unfortunate we couldn't uh, sneak in there. And then moving into to year two with you, obviously individual success again continues, 71 points, but let's focus on the team that second year. What was kind of different about the team and you guys making the playoffs that next year? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, obviously we had uh, Nick Hutchison who had, who's coming off injury, I think, and um, 
you know, he, he really wanted to prove himself and he had a, he had a really big year kind of carrying the team in the beginning and, and letting everyone get into things. And um, then we were, you know, just kind of a balanced attack after that and everyone was contributing. And um, obviously you had Angus and in, in net, I think at that point. So um, obviously you have a chance to win with him every night in the net. So um, just up and down the lineup, we were, we were pretty good. <laughs> um, now the playoffs, what do you remember about that playoff series? It was West K, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was definitely hard fought. I know there's a, a lot of a lot of overtime games, and um, you know they definitely weren't a team that we liked at all. And you know there's throughout the throughout the regular season and things like that, we were got to know them pretty well. But um, you know they had a really good team, and they ended up uh, winning everything. So um, if you're gonna lose to someone, you want to lose to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see rivalries though. You said you didn't like them. <laughs> were they kind of, or was it Vernon? Who was the the most hated team for you guys to play against at the time? Yeah, I mean, I think for me personally, it was definitely between Westgate and Vernon. I mean, pretty easily we played them a lot. And, um, you know, we don't like Penticton a lot either, but they're probably a little bit easier to play against because they play a more skill game. But um, you know, those guys on Westgate, they have a lot of skill and speed, but they were also um, really good in, in getting in our heads and, and making sure after the whistles or little little chirp slashes that the refs weren't able to call. So that uh, <laughs> those guys definitely got under our skin. <laughs> uh, what was it like to play here in this community of Salmon Arm? Like what, what do you remember kind of the most about, about the fans and the city uh, when you played here? Um, you know, just they're definitely really passionate. You know, all those um, – hockey day and salmon arm games that were absolutely packed or whenever we played Vernon everyone would always come in so I mean the fans were always great and um, you know as in a place to live and hang out with the guys or we always found something to do whether it be you know and when the weather was nice go down and sit by the water or you know I remember one day we even uh, went out skating on the lake when it was frozen so you know just little things like that was uh, fun to do. Does anything else stand out? You've given some good tidbits, you know, the Skittles game and, and skating, like you just said. Does anything else kind of memories that, that you remember just from your time here in your two years? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, just hanging out with the guys all the time, you know, whether it be at the rink or away from the rink, you know, those are the, those are the things that you remember the most. I think um, obviously the on, on the ice stuff's important, but, um, you know, it's still all those other guys, you know, we try to communicate and, and obviously um, stay in touch. And then lastly, before we talk about moving on to Michigan State, in terms of developing your game, what was the biggest things and skills that you learned here playing in Salmon Arm with the Silverbacks that really helped translate uh, to that college game? Um, you might think the, the speed of the BCHL is always, it's pretty fast. You know, you play a lot against against a lot of good players. And, you know, at the time, a lot of those guys were, um, you know, really good and, and probably destined for the NHL. So. You get to test yourself against really high level competition and I think that really um, helped develop my game and feel confident for me to, to take it to the next level. Awesome. So let's talk about that first season uh, with the Spartans. Uh, what do you think helped with your transition and how would you describe your first year at Michigan State? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was a really fun experience and um, there's definitely a lot of ups and downs, you know, um, going to college, you're not really exactly sure where you're going to fit into the lineup. and. Um, things like that but um having uh checker with me who played with me in salmon arm was was uh pretty helpful you know he was from michigan and he'd been around the spartans before so you know we hung around a lot freshman year and um we were roommates in the dorm so just uh, having a little bit of comfortability knowing somebody and then you know kind of getting settled into things and then just um you know finding your game from there and then as you moved along of course uh more and more points every year until that junior year 50 points leading the ncaa uh, in terms of your improvement along the way, what do you kind of point to that kind of allowed you uh, to get more comfortable and put up those impressive numbers? Um, yeah, I mean, I think just, you know, the, the college there and um, everyone around the rink, they just allow you to, to be around the rink all the time, you know, whether it be in the gym or, or working on your game with video or, or just being able to, to have access to ice all the time. I think just, you know, having that, all that stuff there is, you know, key to developing your game. And I think for me, being that smaller guy that needed to put on weight and get stronger, you know, having that gym right there was was big for me and, you know, spending a lot of time there and trying to work on my game that way. And then obviously I think I, I got pretty lucky with the linemates that I was playing with, you know, two guys that, that really understand the game and how I like to play it. And we were able to click really well. What what do you remember the most from that, that junior year, your third year, your final year there? 
uh, what are your favorite memories? Um, yeah, I mean, just just the guys, and um, we had a couple couple crazy games there. Um, but you know, when you're when you're flying and traveling with the guys, and you're going to school and living with them, I think you know that's the that's the best part about college, and those are the the parts that I'll remember the most. Are there any coaches there who who really helped as well continue to develop that game years? Yeah, I mean, um, my first year um, we had Tom Anastas, and you know he's the guy who kind of brought me in and, and scouted me from Salmon Arm. So obviously, you know, just him having that belief in me to to go from junior to college was was huge for me, and then. After that, Dan Cole and his staff, they were able to you know, help me and fine tune my game and make sure that I was ready to, to go to that pro level. What did it mean to you? You were named, I mean, a top 10 finalist for the Hobie Baker. You were the you were Big Ten player of the year uh, to, to be recognized. What, what did that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, definitely meant a lot. I mean, for me, I think that, um, you know, those awards come from the team and, and everybody around it that, you know, helped me get to that point because obviously I wouldn't be there or, wouldn't have been able to develop and get to that point without all of them. So, I me, mean, I, I didn't really see it as a personal thing. It's more of a, you know, team thing. Mm -hmm. And and then after Michigan State, how did it kind of work? I mean, you, you kind of, I guess you had your choice being a free agent and, and deciding going through some offers. So can you just talk to me a little bit about that process, what it was like before you signed with the Wings? Yeah, um, so like obviously our season was over in, in Michigan State and I kind of knew at that point that I might want to look into going pro. So, um, you know, those next couple of days we had interviews on, on the phone with, with multiple teams and um, you know, they just kind of expect their, express their interest and, and what they thought of me as a player. So at that point I was able to, you know, what you said, kind of decide and, and choose what was best for what fit was best for me. And, um, you know, for me, it just felt like Detroit was that place. Uh, was there, before we get to why Detroit, of course, <laughs> uh, pretty cool, but uh, why did you know or how did you know that you were ready to turn pro? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, going into the, the junior year, I thought, you know, I had some goals for myself and I was able to um, probably exceed those goals by a lot more than I thought I would. So um, I kind of accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish and um, I just felt like you know, through my coaches and there and through my agent that, you know, they felt the same way that I was ready for the next level. Uh, you said Detroit was the right fit, obviously. Uh, what were some of the factors that went into signing with the Red Wings? Yeah, I mean, I just think, you know, um, the way they saw me as a player, you know, as a, as a skilled guy who thinks the game really well. And, um, you know, those are things that you want to hear from from someone who you're, you're going to going to sign with. And then, um, obviously, they, they gave me the opportunity to play right away, which I thought was was really important for me. And, um, you know, just everything that they were saying seemed to, to be what I wanted to hear. And um, from there, it seemed pretty easy. Now, do you remember, like, the first time you stepped into an NHL dressing room? Do you remember the feeling that you had? What was that like? Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely crazy. You know, you walk in the wings locker room and there's there's so much history there and you know they got all the the guys that have played there on the walls and everything like that so it's definitely pretty intimidating but um and definitely a little starstruck but uh yeah it was pretty crazy <laughs> and who were some of the guys i mean i'm sure there were guys who who helped you uh kind of make that transition you you had seven points <laughs> in 10 games right at the end of your college year like we're not talking like right away stepped in and put up some numbers so who kind of helped you with that transition yeah, I mean, I think all the, looking back on it, all the guys are, were really helpful and um, so many good guys there. But, um, you know, my first couple of games I was playing with um, Thomas Vanek and uh, France Nielsen and those guys, you know, they have a lot of experience. And um, so you're trying to pick up what they're saying and, you know, listen to everything that they have to say. So I think those those two guys for sure were able to, you know, help me just settle in and, and feel like I was at home there. Now, your first goal. Um, again, I mentioned those points, but your first NHL goal, all, everyone dreams of it. Um, what was it actually like to score in the National Hockey League? Yeah, I mean, it's still, still pretty crazy just thinking about it. And, um, you know, I honestly just feel like I've never scored a goal like that in, in my career. Like, that wouldn't be what I thought my goal, first goal would be like. But, um, just kind of blacked out and it happened and, um, you know, just happy that it did happen, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's talk about last season for you, uh, split between the AHL and the Red Wings, of course. Um, how would you kind of describe describe last season? Yeah, I mean, I think it was definitely a tough year for 
a lot of guys and including myself you know i think um you know when you go through stretches where you're losing like that you know it really shows shows your character and i felt like uh you know, I, was, I was playing pretty well but there was a lot of things that i wanted to do better and you know i was able to to go down to grand rapids and, and really improve my game i felt like i did a lot better while i was down there and um, you know just was able to get my confidence back up uh, yeah, and you signed, uh, of course, recently, very recently, got an extension um, with the Red Wings. Uh, can you talk to me? How did it feel to, to kind of secure that extension? It's just because, you know, as we saw with free agency, it's a weird time with, with teams and what they can dole out and stuff contract-wise. So how did it feel to get that done? Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely definitely a relief to just to just have it done and, and know you're going to be, be playing somewhere next year for sure after you know, this long offseason. So. Um, you know, it took a while, but obviously, you know, really happy to be back with them. And you, you said down in the AHL last year, developing your game. Of course, it's all it's always about improvement and stuff. Um, is there a specific part of your game now that, that you were really felt like got better last year in Grand Rapids? Yeah, I mean, I think I just was able to to hold on to pucks a little bit longer and be a little bit stronger than I was than uh, doing in Detroit. I mean, I think, you know, obviously, um, from college to pro, everyone's a lot stronger and everyone's a lot faster. You know, in college, you know, maybe the the guys that are big and strong aren't can't skate that well, so you can kind of get away with it. But NHL level, that's not the case. You know, everyone can can pretty much do everything. So you gotta um, find a way around and um, use little tricks or, or little things like that that you learn um, through playing the game that will help you. Are you ready for uh, some fan questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, here we go. Uh, first one, we'll start a little easy. Uh, from Calvin, uh, what is your favorite memory uh, from your time playing for the Silverbacks? Um, probably just those uh, hockey day and seminar games. You know, I think uh, all those games we played when I was there, they were always packed. Everyone was um, in the rink, and it just it felt like a pretty crazy atmosphere at the time. And um, yeah, those definitely were the most memorable games. Uh, submit a question from uh, Carson Bolduc, uh, a teammate of yours uh, for two seasons. Uh, says, who was your favorite line mate? I, I wonder who one of them might have been. Uh, who was your favorite line mate during your time? <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely think Bolduc is probably one of them. I think we played together all of my first year and a part of my second year. And then obviously um, Ross Height as well. We played together in my second year. And, did pretty well together. So I think those two guys would, would probably be uh, at the top of the list. Sorry to anyone else I was playing like with there. <laughs> I was going to say, who else could it, uh, who could it have been? But maybe that's that's a little tough because I'm sure there were lots of different uh, other line mates. Let's go to a uh, question from Chase Prisky uh, in the Florida Panthers organization, also your teammate uh, one season. He just says, who was your favorite teammate during your time with the backs? <laughs> um. You know, so many, so many great teammates. Um, you know, Prisk obviously was one of them, and um, definitely hard to pick one. It'd be uh, wouldn't be doing any guys justice if I decided to choose. So I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll leave that one uh, unanswered. Okay. Uh, from Riley Booth, and this is a great one. Um, <laughs> is it true that you never once scored in practice while Riley was defending? And is he still the toughest defender you've ever faced? Um, yeah, I saw this one yesterday, so I was doing some thinking. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, he was definitely he was a he was definitely a tough defender. I mean, I don't know if I've ever couldn't recall if I've scored on him, so I'm gonna have to to go with no, I haven't scored on him and, and give his ego a little bit of a boost. Um, but yeah, um, definitely definitely up there for toughest defender. Okay, well, just to go off of that, though, um, are there any other defenders now at this level who, who come to mind who you've played against who really, really tough to play against? Um, yeah, I mean, the two guys that I've played against a couple of times that come to mind would be uh, Chara, obviously just, you know, strong, big, can pretty much do it all. And, and then uh, Brent Burns, just trying to play against him on, on both ends of the ice, being a left winger and him being a right defenseman, you know, I'm always trying to see where he's at in the offensive or defensive zone and his offensive zone. So I think, you know, he was definitely a, a tough play for me. Uh, next submitted question uh, from former assistant coach, uh, Misko. Uh, who was your favorite assistant coach? Now, was he your only, was there only one assistant coach in your first year? That's what I, I've read. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. So I mean, I think that you know he did a, he did might be the the favorite there. He definitely did a lot for me, and um, you know just teaching me a lot of different things. So um, yeah, I guess I'd have to go with him since he's the only one. Is there anything, any memories though, from from uh, co- when he was a coach that stands out, or, or any games and stuff that you guys did? Um, I definitely remember that uh, we would play just kind of a a three on three game below the dots where him and Brando were able to to play. That's why we played it so much is because they were able to <laughs> to be involved, and you would have to pass it to them before you could score. And I remember that, okay. and no one would want to pass to Brando because he would give terrible passes. But Mishko was actually pretty good. So okay. um, yeah, that's probably one of my best memories with them. Uh, next question uh, from Kenny Taves: <laughs> Your favorite chaplain and why? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Kenny was great when we were there. He, uh, you know, we, it was always fun to, you know, go there and uh, have him speak. And then, you know, we always had uh, movie night after that, so the guys would go see a movie. So, you know, we just have, uh, you know, good memories with that. Awesome. Uh, another submitted question from a former teammate, um, Josh Blanchard. Uh, I, I want to know if there's a story behind this. Is it true that you were part of a boy band during your time in Salmon Arm, or is this just smoke? Like, is there a story behind this? Yeah, there definitely is a story. Um, we were definitely got to be very bored at times. Um, and for whatever reason, it was me, Blanchard, Height, and uh, Check. We were, for whatever reason, one day in the locker room, we were like the last people in the locker room and um, play music and, and Heider and, and Check were sing along and they started to, to dance and pretend like they're in a music video and we decided that we thought it was a good idea to to do something like that. So, you know, the four of us kind of dipped ourselves as a, as a boy band. So that was basically what happened. And is there any video evidence of this dancing around? Um, <laughs> there's probably a video of them in the locker room, but um, I don't know if anyone's ever going to see that. But. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Okay, that's it for the submitted questions. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Lastly, I'll just, is there anything else that you want to add uh, when you when you think back to your time? Actually, one thing I forgot that I should, of course, ask you. Do you have any advice uh, for any BCHL players, of course, looking to get that scholarship and, and making it to the next level? As someone who has done it, what is your advice uh, for uh, for those players who want to want to get there? Um, you know, just keep working hard and, and definitely don't focus too much on on what's next and make sure that you're you know you're having fun while you're while you're playing there because it's definitely a part of the journey and um you know those times are gonna contribute into to what happens in the next level as well awesome thanks so much for joining us and uh good luck uh whenever next season starts <laughs> yeah for sure it could be a while but uh thanks for having me